God whom I serve has been faithful to me all these years. Man, if you just let yourself appreciate, if you would just let yourself embrace the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, I'm going to tell you something. He can deliver you too. You know what's interesting about these guys is they said the God that we serve can. They had no idea that they were going to survive the furnace. But you know what? That didn't matter. They knew the men they were. And they weren't going to cave. I'm hoping tonight that each man here, including myself, will drive off this property tonight with a new resolution. God I want to be hotter for you than the fire that I'm standing in front of right now. I have a renewed desire to serve you in the face of adversity. And I will not capitulate. I will not rationalize. I will not justify my behavior anymore. Lord, I'm here to serve you completely. And I'm not going to compartmentalize my faith anymore. I'm going to be the same man at church that I am at work. And I want my wife and kids to know the same man that you worship with on Sundays, the same man you live with Monday through Saturday. I'm consistent. My narrative, lifestyle does not change anymore. I'm all about God. I'm all about living for Him. And compartmentalization, those days are over. These men refused to give in. Even though they were serving a foreign king, living in a foreign land, and their nation, their temple was destroyed. Well, the Bible tells us that uh, Nebuchadnezzar said, well, that's it. You're going in the furnace, the fiery furnace. The Bible says that Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, verse 19, and the expression on his face changed towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He commanded certain mighty men of valor in his army to bind these three men together. They were bound together. He said, before you throw them in the furnace, I want you to turn it up seven times hotter. I'm standing in front of this fire. I can't even imagine it's seven times hotter than it is right now. I want it seven times hotter. And so they did. The Bible says that the guys that bound Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and threw them in the fire, it was so hot, they died. The guys that put them in the fire died. You think God's getting ready to send a message? Oh, boy, he is. Can you imagine? You know, they got these restaurants that serve pizza, you know, and these ovens that are kind of out and open. I mean, I just can't imagine going to a restaurant like, hey, didn't we order pizza 30 minutes ago? And the waitress goes, I'm sorry, the guy that put the pizza in, he's dead. And the oven was so hot, he died. I'm like, how hot is that pizza? The guys died. That put them in the fire. These three men, verse 23, these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down in the midst of the burning furnace. And King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he rose in haste, and he said, Gentlemen, did I not, not, did I not throw three men into the furnace? And they said, Yes, King, we only threw three in. He said, look, why is it that I see four loose walking around in the midst of the fire? And they're not even hurt, he said. And the form of that fourth guy, it's like it's the Son of God. <laughs> we have an advocate. He's called Jesus Christ. And can I remind you of something? I don't care how bad life gets. I don't care how many people walk out of your life and how many are walk out of your world. We got some guys here tonight that have experienced that. You had a marriage that went south. Maybe you got kids that don't talk to you anymore. I mean, you might got jilted at work. Can I just remind you tonight? As hot as this world gets and as troubled as we get, and I can only imagine what's going through these three men's minds as they were thrown in the fiery furnace. But it didn't take them long to realize, hey, we're not in here by ourselves. We have an advocate. It's the Son of God. Now, gentlemen, the world doesn't have that problem. The world's out there on their own. And they're looking for all kinds of facsimiles and all kinds of excuses and other reasons to exist. And so they turn to drugs and they turn to illicit sex and they, and they turn to their jobs for identity and purpose. But men of faith, listen carefully. You and I have the Son of God. And Jesus isn't just with us during times of joy and euphoria and times of good. And the Son of God is with us when the physical and the medical report comes back, and it ain't good. 
The Son of Man is with me when I'm hired and when I'm fired. The Son of Man is with me during hurricane season and when there is no hurricane season. That's the joy of being in Jesus Christ. He is always, always with us, whether we're in the fire or not. Mm -hmm. Nebuchadnezzar said, get those guys out of there now. And he did. And before the day was over, he made another decree that no one in his empire was to bow down or worship any other god but the god of these three men. Guys, I, I've often kind of wondered what would have happened had they rationalized it. Uh, what would happen if they said to themselves, look, let's just bow down. We can ask forgiveness later. Let's try to rationalize and then justify our behavior. But you know what they did? They moved the line. They moved the line so far to the right that nothing, nothing, not even a burning furnace would cause them to compromise their love and passion for their God. And that's the kind of men we need today in the United States of America. That is what we need. That's who we need running for Congress. That's who we need running for president. Those are the elders we need. Those are the CEOs we need. These are the head coaches we need. We need Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who will stand up and say, I don't care how hard it gets. I will stand firm. I will be faithful. I will be consistent. In closing, I leave you with this verse of Scripture. Titus 2, Paul says, Grace brings salvation to all men. And grace teaches us to say no to ungodliness. It is grace that teaches us to say no to worldly passions. It is the grace of Jesus Christ, unmerited favor that we get that we don't deserve, that permits us to live self-controlled and upright lives in this present day. So I know, I know the temptations are great, guys. I know. But I'm asking you, make a commitment tonight as I must that I will stand firm I'll remember that I do not have a spirit of timidity or fear but self control love and discipline and no matter what time no matter what the age God can count on me to be faithful even if it means being born a us. God, I thank you for these three men. These three men remind me that I can live for you. That I do not have to let the temperature or the environment set the tone for who I am. Environmental determinism has, has destroyed so many people because it's convinced us, Lord, that we're never better than the environment we live in. But these three men remain faithful, stood up for you when the environment when the world around them, when their peers were telling them to do otherwise. Three men turned the culture of the greatest empire around. And if three men can do that thousands of years ago, what, is, what can this group of men right here at this bonfire do for you in East Orlando? God, I, I'm just asking you to anoint this group of men tonight. Empower these men tonight. Rise up our, the next generation of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, men who will remain strong, faithful, and consistent. Their narrative and worldview will come straight from the truths of Scripture, and we will not allow contemporary culture to dictate the men that we are. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. And every man say with me, Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Appreciate being with you.